morning and welcome to our worship service in the name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Our call to worship this morning comes from Luke chapter 2 verse 41 to 43. Now his parents went up to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover and when he was 12 years old they went up according to custom and when the feast was ended as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. As we come to worship this morning, we are reminded that for God's people there has always been a desire and a longing to go up to the place of worship. Even Jesus, God the Son, while he was on earth, it was his custom, he was in the habit of going up to the place of worship. And so this morning, we are coming before God in worship. We are, in a sense, going up. And we do so together as we sing from the words of Psalm 84b. Psalm 84b, we're singing stanzas 1 to 4, and the tune is Trust, number 270. Psalm 84 is the song of the pilgrims going up to the place of God, looking forward to being where God is to be worshipped and there they rejoice before his throne. The people go up, they advance, they set their faces to the place of worship and that's what we are doing this morning together in our own homes, wherever we may be, we are looking to God in Jesus Christ. So let us go up in praise together this morning. I'd encourage you, if you're able, to stand where you are as we join together in singing from Psalm 84b. Let us worship God.
Let us join together in prayer. Lord and Father, as we come this morning in worship, we thank you that we do so as your people have done through the centuries. We thank you, Lord, that you call your people to go up before you, to come into your presence, to turn our faces to you, the God, who has first of all turned his face to us. Lord, we thank you for this access to worship in Jesus Christ. Because we know that outside of Jesus, we would only deserve your wrath, your justice. Oh Lord, we know that outside of Jesus, we have no access before you. There would be no going up to the place of worship. Because outside of Jesus, we are still guilty in our sin. Deserving of your wrath. Deserving of the full punishment that our sin and rebellion deserves. And yet, O oh Lord, you have turned your face to us. You have shown grace and mercy in sending Jesus Christ to earth to die in our place, to take the punishment that we deserve for our sin. We thank you that he died on the cross, but also, O oh Lord, that he rose again from the dead we thank you that the way into your presence is now open through Jesus Christ, the perfect substitute for sin and a risen living Saviour. And so we go up this morning to you. We go up in and through Jesus Christ. We come into your presence through him alone. And we pray that you might accept of us in Christ this day. Lord, as we come together in worship in our homes, uh, as we meet before your throne of grace, we ask that you'll draw close by your spirit. Teach us and instruct us in your word. O Lord, stir up our hearts within us concerning worship, the place of worship, and of course, O Lord, that ultimate place, our eternal dwelling place. We thank you, Lord, that in your grace you call us to go up, to press on towards the goal, to set our faces to our heavenly dwelling in Jesus Christ for all eternity. We thank you this morning, O oh Lord, that the grace and the mercy that you've shown us not only brings us to worship you here on earth, but ultimately it will bring us to that eternal inheritance, the new heavens and the new earth where all will be made new, where everything will be perfect and where we will see our Saviour face to face. So encourage us, we pray today. Help us, O oh Lord, to keep walking in your ways, to keep pressing on in our faith, to keep our feet headed in the direction of going up to the place of worship, going up to our heavenly calling in Jesus Christ. Lord, might your word strengthen us to that end today. Might we be taught by your spirit and led in your truth. And more than anything, we pray that you will exalt the name of Jesus Christ. Help us today, O Lord, to fix our eyes more and more on him. Because we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to read together from God's Word. We're turning to the Old Testament and to the book of 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter 36. It's the last chapter in the book of 2 Chronicles. And we're going to be reading from verse 11 to the end of the chapter. 2 Chronicles chapter 36, reading from verse 11 to the end. This is the living word of God. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for 11 years in Jerusalem. 
He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord his God. He did not humble himself before Jeremiah the prophet, who spoke from the mouth of the Lord. He also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, who had made him swear by God. He stiffened his neck and hardened his heart against turning to the Lord, the God of Israel. All the officers of the priests and the people likewise were exceedingly unfaithful, following all the abominations of the nations. And they polluted the house of the Lord that he had made holy in Jerusalem. The Lord, the God of their fathers, sent persistently to them by his messengers, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they kept mocking the messengers of God, despising his words and scoffing at his prophets, until the wrath of the Lord rose against his people, until there was no remedy. Therefore, he brought up against them the king of the Chaldeans, who killed their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary, and had no compassion on young man or virgin, old man or age. He gave them all into his hand. And all the vessels of the house of God, great and small, and the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the treasures of the kings and of his princes, all these he brought to Babylon. And they burned the house of God and broke down the wall of Jerusalem, and burned all its palaces with fire, and destroyed all its precious vessels. He took them into exile in Babylon, those who had escaped from the sword, and they became servants to him and to his sons until the establishment of the kingdom of Persia to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah until the land had enjoyed its Sabbaths. All the days that it lay desolate, it kept Sabbath to fulfill seventy years. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and also put it in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever is among you of all his people, may the Lord his God be with him. Let him go up. Amen. May God bless to us the reading of his word. I want to speak to the boys and girls for a moment or two. And I have a picture to show you this morning. Uh, but this picture is maybe for some of the older ones, first of all. A little trip down memory lane for, for some people. And it's the picture of the cover of a, of a music song or two songs. It was a group called Boney M and they sang a song called By the Rivers of Babylon. And this song was at number one in the charts many, many years ago. In fact, it was number one in the charts before I was even born. So that's how old that song is. And perhaps some of you at home some of the older ones remember dancing along to that song in your bedrooms as you played it on your LP. I, I don't know, but perhaps you did, and I can think of one or two in particular who maybe did that. By the Rivers of Babylon. It was a very famous, popular song by this group. But where does that song come from? And the song actually comes from the Bible. It comes from Psalm 137. And in Psalm 137, that we're going to be singing in a moment or two, we have these words. By the streams of Babylon we wept. You see, God's people 
were in trouble. God's people were sad. They weren't able to be in Jerusalem. They'd been taken out of their land because they'd been wicked. And God brought them to a far off distant country. A country that didn't know God, that didn't worship God. And the people were struggling. They were sad because they weren't at the place of worship. And so Psalm 137 is all about the discouraged, unhappy people of God who aren't able to be at the place of worship. And that's been a little bit like us recently. We haven't been able to come to church. We haven't been able to meet together in our church building. We haven't been able to see our friends and talk to them and, and sing in praise together in our church building. And maybe we feel a little bit like the people of Israel all those years ago, at home, feeling sad, and can't be at the place of worship. But Psalm 137 is pointing us to something wonderful. Because it's telling us that God has a place of worship. And that God delights in our worship. And although God's people were in exile, although they were far away, we're going to see this morning that God had a wonderful promise to bring them back. They were being told to go up to Jerusalem to go up to the place of worship they were being told to go up and praise God we're hoping that someday soon we'll be able to return to our church building although we're sad that we can't be here together at the moment we're looking forward to the day when we can be back together worshiping and praising God but Psalm 137 is telling us something more and it's reminding us that there is an eternal place of worship because here on earth we're just in many ways passing through we are like travelers we are heading to somewhere even better and it's not our physical church building as much as we love it but it's to heaven because it's in heaven where we will be praising God forever in Jesus Christ. It's in heaven where we will see our Saviour. And we will be sad at times here on earth. But we are to remember that we are heading to heaven. We are heading to our eternal home. And there we will praise him forever. We can be praying that soon we will be back together again in our church building. Pray that that will happen. Pray that everything will work out so that soon we can be back together. But also remember that here on earth we are just passing through. We are like people in exile, looking forward to somewhere even greater. And that greater place is heaven for all who believe and trust in Jesus Christ. We want to sing together the words of Psalm 137. We're singing the first five stanzas of the Psalm, the tune of St. Agnes, number 136. And as we sing about the rivers of Babylon, as we sing about the sadness of God's people in a foreign place, let us remember that here on earth we are just passing through. We are looking forward to our eternal home. We're looking forward to the eternal place of worship. And in God's grace, through God's promises, and in his providence, we will be there. Psalm 137. Again, if you're able, I would encourage you to stand as we sing together in prayer.
Let us again join together in prayer. Father, as we travel through this life, as we are pilgrims here on earth, headed towards our eternal home, we thank you, Lord, that you've given us reminders that although living as aliens here on earth, we do have a place of dwelling, a place of worship. Lord, we thank you for our church family. We thank you, Lord, for our church building in which we can gather. And we pray that soon we will be able to return here together. We thank you for all the preparations that are being done by deacons and elders in preparing the building in making sure it's suitable and ready. And so, Lord, in due course, at the right time, we pray that we will look forward to being here together once again. Lord, we pray for our nation. As we sing of this psalm where your people call on you to look on those who persecuted them, look on those who called for the destruction of Jerusalem. Lord, we pray that you might be gracious to our nation. O oh Lord, we long that you might show mercy to those who seek to silence the church. Those, O oh Lord, who seek to promote wickedness before goodness. O oh Lord, may you change their hearts. And if not, O oh Lord, then silence them. O oh Lord, stop their hands from doing wicked things. Protect your people. Guard us, uphold us in your strength. Father, we pray that our songs of praise might reach out to those around us, that they might see the importance of coming into your presence through Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray that the preaching of your word, the reading of your word, the, the conversations of your people concerning the word, the gospel being spread, Lord, we long that that might reach out and by your spirit change hearts and minds. Oh Lord, cause your church to grow and keep her safe in these days. Change our nation. O Lord, draw men, women and children to yourself. May they too find themselves to be pilgrims, travellers here on earth, headed towards eternal dwelling in Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to encourage one another. And we pray now that as we come to your word, you will humble us before it. O oh Lord, may your spirit be working in us as we've already prayed to your praise, glory and honour, because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're beginning a new series this morning. This is going to be a short series of six sermons based on a group of psalms found in the Bible, in the Word of God. These songs are collectively known as the Songs of Ascents. Psalms 120 to 134. Fifteen psalms in total. Now for the mathematically competent among you, and I'm definitely not including myself in that group, you'll have quickly worked out that six sermons doesn't go into 15 psalms. So other than showing my lack of mathematical ability, I hope this also gives you a little hint as to how we're going to be approaching these 15 psalms. We're not going to be taking one song at a time, but we're going to be grouping them together, taking some of the major themes that come from these psalms, getting a flavour of the general flow or the main topics of these 15 songs. And the overriding theme, the main theme that comes out from them is going up. And that's what the title of these songs means, the songs of ascents. 
The songs of going up, the songs of steps or degrees. They are pilgrim songs. Songs for the traveller on his way to the dwelling place of God. As a congregation, we are looking forward to going up to the place of worship. We're looking forward to being able to return to this place of worship in due course. A going up to the place of worship. But more than just being a physical place of worship, we are also on our journey. Going up to our eternal dwelling place. That place of God in Jesus Christ. And so these Psalms point to much more than worship here on earth. They're pointing us to heaven, to eternity, to the spiritual reality of our physical worship here on earth. Songs for travellers, going to the eternal dwelling place of God in Jesus Christ. Fifteen pilgrim psalms. We begin this morning not in the psalms, but in Second Chronicles chapter 36, verse 22 and 23. Now this might appear to be an unusual place to begin a new series looking at the songs of ascents. But let me explain. First and second chronicles is a summary of the history of redemption up to this point in the Old Testament. It's a summary of God's work among his people up to this point. First Chronicles chapter 1 verse 1 begins with Adam. That's the very first word of the first verse of the first chapter of the first book of Chronicles. Adam, the beginning. And then it ends with these last words in the last verse of the last chapter of the second book of Chronicles, the words go up. We begin with Adam and we end with the call to go up. In fact, this last word here in second Chronicles is the last word in the Hebrew Bible. The ordering of the books of the Old Testament uh, originally had first and second chronicles as the last books of scripture now that changed under the inspiration of the holy spirit as the new testament was written and all the scriptures were compiled uh, but in the hebrew bible the closing words of the old testament scriptures were go up chronicles isn't just a summary of God's dealings with his people in the Old Testament. But it's written to encourage God's people who've just returned from exile. These pilgrims, these travellers, they needed to know what God had done for them and that God was calling on them to keep going, continue going up to the dwelling place of God, continue looking to God, Continue setting your face to the place of worship. Go up. This word, go up, it comes from the same root word that we have in the title of the 15 songs in our new series. The songs of ascent. The songs of going up. It's the same phrase that we have in Psalm 122, verse 4, one of these songs of ascent, the tribes go up. There is to be a going up. When we come to the New Testament, we find that Jesus and his family, his, his mother, and Joseph and the brothers, they went up to Jerusalem as was their custom. Later on in Jesus' ministry, uh, he will his disciples will say to him, let's go up to Jerusalem at the time of the feast. We read about Paul in the book of Acts, that he went up to Jerusalem at the time of the feast. Three times in the year, three separate feasts, God's people went up to the place of worship. 
was the custom, was the habit. It's what we're being encouraged to do here in Second Chronicles. Go up. And so I've chosen this phrase as the title of our series on these Psalms. Go up. Is the heading of our sermon this morning also. Go up. We're being encouraged through these pilgrim psalms and through this passage in Second Chronicles to go up to the dwelling place of God. Keep looking to the dwelling place of God in Jesus Christ. Set your face to the place of worship of God in Jesus Christ. Keep travelling on the way to the dwelling place of God in Jesus Christ. Today I say to you, go up. With these thoughts in mind, let us turn our attention to 2 Chronicles chapter 36, verse 22 and 23. And I want us to notice firstly that we are to go up by the promises of God. Go up by the promise of God. Verse 22, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah the prophet might be fulfilled. God's people have been taken off into exile or captivity in Babylon. And we have a short record of these events for us in chapter 36. We read from that chapter earlier. The kings have been a failure. They haven't been faithful to the covenant of God. We'll consider this further when we come to Psalm 132. The priesthood and the Levitical system at the temple, it's corrupt and it's wicked. What a contrast we will find when we come to Psalms 133 and 134. But for God's people, there has been failure, faithlessness, corruption, and so God sends his people into exile at the hands of Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonian. The temple in Jerusalem is destroyed. God's people are removed from the place of worship. But all is not lost. Because God has promised that he will restore his people. God has promised that they will return to the land and to the place of worship. God has entered into covenant with his people and God will not break his promises. Through the prophet Jeremiah, God spoke to his people telling them that for 70 years they would be in exile. And then after that time was complete, God would restore them, bring them back to the land. Their sin led them into exile. But God's grace, God's mercy, God's work of redemption would bring them back, would restore them. God's steadfast covenant love, God's promise was still in place. And this is what the songs of ascent are all about. The promise keeping God, Yahweh, Jehovah. The Lord keeping his promises and restoring his people, bringing them to the place of worship. Just a flavour of these Psalms. Psalm 120 verse 1. In my distress I called to the covenant keeping Lord and he answered me. Psalm 121 verse 2. My help comes from the covenant keeping Lord. Psalm 121 verse 4, if it had not been the covenant keeping Lord who was on our side. Psalm 130 verse 7, for with the covenant keeping Lord there is steadfast love. Psalm 132, the whole psalm is a plea to the God who's entered into covenant with David that he would keep his covenant promises and that the king would be on the throne forever. And now, 
for the returned exiles. For those who have returned discouraged, fearful, doubtful, they are being reminded that God has promised the covenant-making and covenant-keeping Lord has promised that they will be brought back to the place of worship. As God promised through the prophet Jeremiah, so that God would fulfill every word that he spoke through his prophet, God is bringing his people back. Go up, because God has promised that he will bring you to his dwelling place. Set your face to his throne, to his place of worship. Because he has promised that he will do it. He will bring you through. He will deliver you. He will restore you. He will give you peace. It's of course not just the words of prophecy through Jeremiah that God is keeping. But rather these promises are shadows or forerunners to the greater promise. The spiritual reality concerning not a physical land and a physical building but a heavenly home a heavenly dwelling like the jews returning from exile we are those who are journeying through a strange land a place that isn't our eternal home our spiritual home we're heading to jesus christ and we can have doubts fears and discouragements and so we need to be reminded that the God who has promised to restore us the God who has promised to redeem us in Jesus Christ he will bring us to the place of his dwelling go up keep moving forward in Jesus Christ keep setting your face to the place of worship because God has promised his word will be fulfilled he will never go back on his promise the one who has called us in Jesus Christ is faithful and he will fulfill all that he has promised for his people when we do return to this building for worship and God willing will be able to do that uh, hopefully within the next month things won't be as they once were we'll be adhering to those principles that help us care for and look out for one another we will be socially distancing we'll be setting up the building in such a way that we can worship without the fear of infection we're going to be taking all the necessary precautions to keep one another safe. And that might discourage us. For a time, it won't be as it once was. But in our discouragement, we need to be reminded that the physical building isn't our eternal place of worship. This isn't our, our final destiny. God has promised that he will bring us to himself. So keep going up. Keep looking to Jesus Christ. As we journey through this life, as we are pilgrims, we are to go up, keep looking forward to heaven, to being with Christ. Keep on walking in his ways. Keep our feet on his paths. Go up, because he has promised, and he is faithful, and he will not break his word. He will not leave us or forsake us. He will fulfill all that he says he will do. So keep on going up. Keep on looking to Jesus Christ. Keep on having your face set to the dwelling place of God. He has promised. Go up by the promises of God. Then secondly, 
Go up in the providence of God. Go up in the providence of God. Verse 22, still of 2 Chronicles 36. The Lord stirred the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia. The Persian Empire took over from the Babylonians. Uh, and King Cyrus is on the throne. And he's a pagan king. But look what God does with Cyrus. He stirs this man's heart to do the will of God for the good of God's people. Cyrus makes a decree that all who are God's people can go up to Jerusalem. This isn't the first time that we come across Cyrus in scripture. We have a prophecy of him in Isaiah. Before Cyrus was even born, he's mentioned by name by the prophet Isaiah. In the chapter 45 of Isaiah, we're told that Cyrus would be God's chosen instrument, his anointed one. Even though this man did not know God as the true God, God was going to show his people and the nations that he is the Lord, there is no other. Listen to how clear the prophecy is concerning Cyrus. Verse 13 of Isaiah 45. I have stirred him up in righteousness, and I will make all his ways level. He shall build my city and set my exiles free, not for price or reward, says the Lord of hosts. And what's most remarkable is that this pagan king is not a believer. Here we see God's sovereign his providence. God's working all things out for the good of his people and for his own glory. The hearts of the kings of the earth belong to God. Every decision they make comes from the hand of God. God is in control. That's what we are being told here. What a comfort to discouraged pilgrims. What a comfort to disappointed pilgrims. What a comfort to small, despised, weary, disheartened group of travellers going up to worship. That's what it was like for the Jews who'd returned to Jerusalem. They were small in number, limited resources, discouraged by the work. We'll see more of this as we look at the songs of ascents. But to assure them, to strengthen them, God reminds them that he is the one in control. He's in control of all events, all people, even the heart of the king is in his hands. Cyrus is an anointed one of God who will bring about God's plans for his people. So go up. God is in control. God plans and purposes. God works out his providences that we might continue on looking to him, setting our face to the place of dwelling. How much more wonderful when we come to the New Testament and we find an even greater anointed one who brings about God's plans and purposes in bringing us up. Jesus Christ, the anointed one, the true shepherd of his people. And in Jesus Christ, we have one who went into exile for us. He was bruised and crushed on the cross for our sin and our rebellion. He was crucified. He endured the full wrath of God for our sin. He entered into exile, the place of punishment, taking our place so that we might be set free, so that we could be redeemed and restored. And in Jesus Christ, we see the greatest expression or the greatest outworking of providence. Crucified at the hands of wicked, evil men, but all within the plan of God for the
the saving of our soul. Cyrus, he was charged with building the house of God in Jerusalem. But Jesus Christ was entrusted and charged with building a house of God eternal and perfect in the heavens. And God worked all things together in God the Son for our good to bring us up, bring us to himself, to keep us walking in his ways. And friends, this should spur us on to keep going, to keep looking to Jesus Christ, to keep going up. God works all these things together for our good, for his glory. God in his providence, in his overruling, God in complete control, working all these things together. So go up. Set your face to the place of worship. Set your face to the eternal dwelling place in Jesus Christ. God has worked all things together. The one who is the maker of the heavens and the earth. As we sing about in the songs of ascents. As all things in his control. If that the Lord had not been on our side. Unless the Lord builds the house. Those who build it labour in vain. We're going to be singing these words from these songs. God is in control. His providence, his working all things together, it assures us that we will go up. Keep pressing on towards heaven, knowing that God works out his providences so that we will go up. The Lord will keep your soul. Go up in the providence of God. Go up by the promises of God. Go up in the providences of God. And then thirdly and lastly, go up as the people of God. Go up as the people of God. Verse 23. Whoever is among you of all his people, may the Lord his God be with him. Let him go up. We can only go up. We can only go to the dwelling place of God. We can only truly worship if we are one of God's people. Whoever is among you of his people, go on. Not all the people of Israel and Judah left Babylon or, or Persia. Not all who called themselves Jews were the people of God. They perhaps bore the right nationality, they had the right skin tone, even perhaps carried the sign of the covenant on their body, but they were not circumcised in their heart. They hadn't sought God, were still dead in their sin. To go up, we must be the people of God. We must belong to Him. We must be his children. We are to be brothers and sisters dwelling together in unity. We are to be the servants of God, serving nightly. We are to be the children's children. These are all phrases from the songs of ascent. We are to be the people of God. And so I must ask you the question this morning. Are you one of God's people? Have you come to him in saving faith? Do you trust through Jesus Christ? Have you sought forgiveness for your sin from him through Jesus Christ? Do you believe? And have you trusted that Jesus Christ is the only saviour? If not, then you're not a child of God. And so you cannot go up. There's no access for you into heaven. There's no open door waiting for you. 
You can't go up on your own. You can't go up in your own strength. You can't go up trusting in yourself. No, we can only go up as the people of God. In many ways, the same is true for the public place of worship. You're maybe looking forward to returning to the building, to being at the place of worship. You've perhaps missed public worship or certain aspects of it. You've missed seeing people that you know, that you've grown up with. You've missed the tradition or the routine of coming to the place of public worship. But if you're not a Christian, then what you do here in this place is not worship. You might come here physically, but you're not here spiritually. We can only truly go up when we are in Jesus Christ. We can only truly worship spiritually when we are in Jesus Christ. We can only truly sing the songs of ascent when we are God's people. Otherwise, we're just uttering vain words from our lips. To go up, we must be one of the people of God. We must come to God the Father through Jesus Christ. Then this also encourages those who are his people. If you're one of his, you're a child of God and Jesus Christ, go up. Be at the place of worship, which at this stage is, is in our homes, coming together. We long for that day when we can be here together in the public building, worshipping together. But ultimately, Keep your feet headed towards the eternal dwelling, the eternal place of worship in Jesus Christ. Go up, go up day by day to the throne of grace in Jesus Christ. Go up to your Father in heaven day by day as you read his word, as you pray to him. And you can do it because you are one of his people. You are one of his children. As we, God willing, will sing and read through the songs of ascents, we are to do it as the people of God. As one of his. Keep setting your face. Keep walking in his ways. Keep looking to Jesus Christ. Keep going up. Keep advancing. Because you are one of his. Whoever is among you of all his people. May the Lord his God be with him. Let him, let her go up. My prayer is that as we look and study the songs of ascents, as we take these words on our lips and offer them up in praise, that this might be an encouragement to us to keep on going up in the promises of God, by his providences and as his people. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for reminders that we have received today about how we have an eternal home in the heavens in Jesus Christ. We thank you that you call us to keep on going up, to keep setting our face to you, to keep walking in your ways. Oh Lord, might we indeed, through your promise, by your providences, and as your people, go up and find blessing and peace and restoration and grace in you because we ask it all in Jesus name amen we close by singing the words of psalm 135
Psalm 135. We're singing stanzas 1 to 3 and then 11 and 12. And the tune is Ernan number 12. Psalm 135, stanzas 1 to 3 and 11 and 12. Here we have God's people, the servants of God, coming up before him, singing in praise. The house of all of his people gathering together. This is where we are headed as his people to our eternal dwelling in Jesus Christ. Psalm 135. Let us again stand as we worship God in praise.